tell me more about your uh, crying alone in the wilderness process. I'm kind of interested to see what that's about. I just would love the idea by the me running a hundred mile uh, mar- ultra crying marathon and time. Jeffrey Jeffrey crawl, coming past me and just crying and running at the same Sobbing. time. Sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think I think there's definitely some of that. I also. Um, for me, a lot of those long training runs were really, really meditative. I, I, I often would uh, kind of, unfortunately, sometimes I do it when I'm driving too, but you know how you're, you're driving and you get somewhere and you're like, I don't really remember how I got here. You, you get sidetracked and your ma- your brain goes somewhere else. That would happen so frequently on, on runs. And when I would kind of, you know, become conscious of where I was and what I was doing again, I would just, I would be left with that same feeling that I, that I often have when I'm done meditating. And so I think that was part of it. Um, I think, you know, I grew up in the Midwest where men are men and I'm sure, you know, I was like, progressive as I am now and in my, or I like to think as, uh, you know, in in my mindset, I'm sure that plays into it as well. Um, But it was just nice to, to get away. I also had been living in New York and then I moved to LA and I, I always, I I worked in theater, like in comedy and lived in New York city. And I always thought I was an indoor kid and uh, it, it took me being in New York for about six years to um, to like start to get really antsy to get into nature. I like went hiking on Bear Mountain up upstate, and um, I think that was part of what I loved about cycling too. Um, and I just I think I was kind of like really hungry to get get out of the city. I, I always thought I was a city boy, but when I look back at my childhood, you know, I grew up on a farm, and I spent. 10 hours a day outside playing. And I, I, I hadn't kind of registered that that was part of me, you know, well, in that capacity. Right. Don't get, don't get too emotionally healthy. Cause you probably won't be that funny after that. I know. <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> well, it's really hard to write comedy when you're, uh, when you're mentally you're happy and stable. Mentally stable. You know, well, I, just, I, was... I, I want to come back because I, we, we drifted away from something I think could be, uh, important. Um, you know, I'm 52 and I would say that, you know, it's taken me a very, very long time for me to be in a comfortable state of mind where I could actually allow myself to start feeling some stuff from my childhood. And it's confusing because oftentimes, uh, there's not a lot of sadness. It, 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 it's a, I, I feel like there's supposed to be sadness there about stuff. And I don't feel the sadness. But then when I'm watching, I have a six-month-old daughter. When I'm watching her in, 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 in her perfection, tears start to well up. And that's when I start to say, okay, wait a second. I didn't have a mommy that took care of me this way. I wasn't relaxed and calm. I was in an anxious state as far back as I can remember. And so my wife this morning, she goes, you look like you're about to cry. I said, I wish I could. Then did you say, I'm not crying, you're crying, and you ran out of the room? Yeah. <laughs> so I, tell, tell me more about your healing processes and your grieving processes. Yeah, well, I, uh, I did have a great childhood. I don't really, I, 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 we, I didn't really have very many hardships. My parents were together. My mom and dad both were very loving. We were lucky to be financially stable. And I think that was part of what was hardest for me was um, that like safety net. Like I felt my whole life had been so lucky to always feel like super secure and loved and taken care of. And it sounds so silly because I was 30, 31 years old when she passed away, but it felt like, oh, crap, like now I have to be an adult. Like I'm, I'm in charge of myself now. I don't have anyone to call when things go wrong. And I think that was a lot of my my pain was like growing up, which sounds so stupid. I, but, but I mean, that's devil's advocate, Jeffrey, you obviously and uh, had an unhealthy relationship with food. If you were 340 pounds, I'd have to imagine you weren't, oh. there was something going on that was not healthy, right? That's fair to say. 
I mean, there has to be. It would be interesting to dig deeper into that. I mean, I, I think a lot of it was was cultural. I mean, where I grew up, that's that's that was the norm. Eat. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember yeah, that. everything's yeah. fried in rural Missouri. There's no concept. Also, you know, my parents didn't have like nutrition class in middle school like I did, and my mom's. I mean, that was part of her problem. Uh, part of the way that she wound up where she wound up, she couldn't really wrap her head around a lot of nutrition stuff. And you know, as a and she was struggling with heart disease for like 17 years in the hospital and her doctors provided tons of, of, um, education and resources, but she just couldn't really wrap her head around it. I mentioned in the film, she couldn't figure out why, you know, asparagus, if you breaded it and fried it, why it wasn't still healthy, Um, which seems so obvious to us. But uh, I just, that's the environment I grew up in. I also, I I remember I had a PE teacher who um, he gave me, we worked on um, E, Fs, and Ds. I don't know why we didn't have A, B, C, Ds uh, grades, but um, I basically, he gave me a C and she went in and talked to him and she was like, what, is he not participating? Like, what do I need to do? Like, what's, you know, what's the problem? And he was like, oh no, he's participating. Like it's, he's fine. It's just, you know, he's, he's overweight. He's unhealthy. And I mean, you know, the guy had a point, but my mom, like, you know, went full tilt That's mama funny. bear on him. So I was just always grew up in a place where like, it's fine. Like who cares if you're, if you're overweight in my community, 80% of the people around me were overweight. Uh, so it was normalized and, maybe. That's, yeah. But you know, yeah, know think, yeah. yeah, but yeah. you know, I don't, I'm not playing ser- psychiatrist or therapist over here, but Do I, it. I'll, no, I'll keep the focus in on myself. You know, my study a lot now and the stuff that I write about really pertains to solution to not just my own problems, but really to the problems of humanity. And it doesn't really take a genius to look and say, wait a second, all these problems that we have as a, as a species really arise from the imperfections in our child rearing practices. And no one can get it perfect. That's not what I'm saying, because there's no such thing, because the world is imperfect and the human mind is far from perfect. What you'll hear very commonly people say is I had a great childhood. And what it sounds like is that you got the nurturance and the love and there wasn't a great deal of trauma. However, there's something to look at in the fact that your dynamic was um, mired in addictive cycles and behaviors, which is indicative of emotional trauma that perhaps your mom didn't have the greatest childhood. And also what you said too, was cultural. It's cultural for everyone that we live in a society that even if you had a near perfect childhood, the values and, you know, the concepts that we have in our modern world create a little bit of dysfunction. And so I think it's important not to focus in on whether or not you had a perfect childhood, but to try to pinpoint where there were deficiencies because they are certainly the linkage to your own addictive cycles, your own addictive behavior. Addictive Addiction is born first and foremost from anxiety. And it's a coping mechanism to deal with that utterly painful existence of being anxious and frightful. Whoa, Lord. Okay. You know, it's funny. Is what? That, what, um, what? What? No, you just, said, it's Lord. deep. It's very deep what you just said. Very Come on, man. We ain't. What are we? What are we? Children here? We're playing yeah. games. We got um, a podcast, man. We got to. We got to say something here, for God's sake. 